my dice are all the way in my room. I think I'll have to use the one on my phone. I'm going to use the roll 20. Yes. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Are we live? Turn it over to Chelsea. Yes. Yeah. Hey, everybody. We're live with a very special, clearly not owl uh, game. Uh, clearly a, a smidge more uh, anime, a smidge more. Ideas is a smidge more uh, Grant Ellis. Uh, so uh, speaking of, Grant's going to be running today's game, which I'm very excited about. Uh, but before we hop into intros and mechs and angst, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let, let me uh, share a few bits of good news. So uh, <clears throat> if you're here for the first time, welcome. Uh, if uh, you're back for a little Sunday fun. Well, we're going to have some of that too. This upcoming Sunday is also Sunday fun day. So a week from today, next week is Sunday fun day. We still have some uh, spots available in our uh, morning D&D &D session. So if you want to play some D&D, &D, sign up. Uh, we'll drop the link here in just a second in the chat once Grant gets us moving. Uh, in addition, I'm excited to announce two additional things. Witch Girl Adventures returns Tuesday nights of this upcoming week for the second and final season of uh witch girl adventures so it's gonna be um yeah it's gonna be a sight to behold and uh, i'm excited to announce that the dot lot is getting a slew of new emojis it's happening it's been far too long and i've been a lazy dot about it uh but this lazy dot has got uh, her dotly button gear and I managed to get it all done. So uh, emojis are being made and worked on. Uh, we're going to have all kinds of fun, ridiculous things coming. So we're, we'll have um, a big reveal and sub a uh, for those later in the month. So uh, I will uh, tell you guys more about that as it arrives. Now, I'm done with my stuff. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Grant, who's running us through this today. And he's going to, I'm sure, fill us in on all the magic girl mag magicness. If everything and thank you so much um <laughs> I, was, I had this whole thing i was gonna i was like all right and when chelsea toss it over i'm gonna be like but i have a story to tell first about how i bought a farm this week and on the farm there were three daughters <laughs> and then i described three and i tell this whole farmer joke but i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna talk about uh escliflone-esque <laughs> so escliflone-esque is a one shot that we've planned uh, which is all about romance, uh, giant robots, uh, danger, intrigue, where we are on a fantastical world that mixes science and magic, and all of us are playing heroic figures. Uh, our capital has been attacked by a mysterious army. They have devastated it, and the sole surviving member of the royal family and their trusted advisor has summoned us heroes to flee with them south, uh, to plea before the Bronze Empress um, uh, for aid to uh, uh, overcome the Grey Legion, which is the name of the Dastardly Army. So Escliflone is a 1990s anime series uh, that I really liked growing <laughs> up. Um, I think I was sick uh, one week in high school, and I just binge-watched a stack of VHS tapes from Suncoast. So I bought a bunch of VHS, and I just watched it, and I was all about it. Um, where you have <laughs> plucky, plucky young track stars who uh, get teleported to a different world. And uh, yeah, so you have all this wonderful, magical, mystical anime aesthetic. So uh, before we get too deep into explaining the setting more, let's go around and introduce each other and who will be playing in a little bit about our character. And then since this is a one shot and none of us have played these characters before, we're going to do a little bit of shaping and refining to set the stage uh, as our characters travel south. So why don't we start with Bunny? Hello, Bunny. Hi. <laughs> I am going to be playing Kitty. Kitty is, uh, they, they build the robots. It, they've been very, um, <laughs> it's, they kind of they have done a lot of things with scraps and suddenly they've been able to make the most delicious robots in all of their fun. And they have a good rapport with one of our friends that we travel with. Ooh, excellent. Um, and Ethan. Hi, I'm Ethan. Um, I'll be playing Ten, who is a brash knight who rides the lightning. Uh, I got a sword and a shield, and I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna use them all the time. 
<laughs> also, I, in my character sheet, I have labeled very long flowing hair. And if I don't use that as an asset at some point, um, I guess I'll have to donate it to charity. Wind wave hair attack. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclona <laughs> snow. <laughs> Whips her hair back and forth. We say and the name of the move when we use it. <laughs> That's how you know you. That's how you know it's working. <laughs> In the 1990s Dragon Ball role playing game, if you said the name of the move, you got bonus dice, and you'd pick them up and roll them if you remember. Heck yeah! And then you got more bonus dice if you got up and did the gestures for the uh, move. So it was all about like really getting into it to collect all these dice, and then like they'd end up everywhere. And it's like now who's going to count all these dice? All right, uh, and Marcy. Hey everybody, my name is Marcy. Um, usually I would be uh, jamming for this L, uh, this time slot for L, uh, but you're going to notice that my voice is going to get continuously more and more raspy. This is why I'm not jamming. Um, today I'm playing Kai, and Kai is a naive, uh, magic-flavored uh, explorer who uh, works miracles. I'm a <laughs> healer, and sometimes I'm strong, but mostly I don't know what's going on in the world. World is some place, and last but not least, Dot. <clears throat> I'm playing your basic magic girl, Margaret Armstrong, um, who is a graceful magical warrior who battles robots in a modern world. Uh, she um, she has a thing about robots, uh, kind of a love hate relationship. Uh, her kitten was squished uh, by a robot one time, and since then she's had a very specific purpose of putting her use of weaponry and her her magic strength to the smashing of such uh, machines. <clears throat> <laughs> Our group of dashing and darrowing uh, robot slaying sword people um, are accompanied by a traveling group of NPCs. Um, and... Uh, so, sorry, chat filled up. Um, and these four NPCs are four sword girlfriends. They are knights of the royal family. And their names are Brass, Strings, Woodwind, and Percussion. Uh, they are also <laughs> joined... Yes. Because, <laughs> you know, anime. And they are also joined by Nicodemus, the scheming Archmagus. I, well, maybe he's not so scheming, but he looks like he is. He has the right eyebrows for it. And... Uh, the, they are also joined by the sole surviving member of the royal family, Leofonzo. And uh, Leofonzo is uh, very quiet, laconic, and typically only speaks through uh, Nicodemus. Leofonzo has not warmed up or trusted anyone unless we decide otherwise. So now uh, let's sort of determine our sociality between each other, our relationships mm -hmm. between each other. So... One of you in this group is looked up to by all the others, including the uh, NPCs, as the respected leader. Who assumes that role? Does not mean you will always lead, but you are looked to as the leader. Don't you wield a sword? Yeah. Right? T Ten? Is your character's name even? Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, I've, a, I've got a sword. Yeah. <laughs> it's sometimes on lightning. And Nicodemus <laughs> foretold. Nicodemus said, whoever carries the sword is the leader of this group. And then they all <laughs> eyes turned towards Tin. And all the sword girlfriends were like, but we have swords too. And they were like, yes, but Tin's is the sword of leadership. <laughs> and then that, that's literally how it went down. So you're And now here we are. <laughs> yes. So now here reluctant we are. Reluctant leader 10. <laughs> reluctant leader 10. And it might be that you're a reluctant leader. Um, one of you, there was a challenge on the road, uh, and there was a specific trial. Uh, in oh. fact, it was a creature uh, that was sort of a neutral, unaligned, uh, predatory force uh, that was simply coming out to feed. And uh, if it were not for your ingenuity, uh, you all would have been completely wiped out. Which of you was the genius of the group that solved the problem of the predator beast? <laughs> Yeah, that's gotta be Kitty. <laughs> it's Kitty. I just picked up a bunch of stuff and threw it together, and then it somehow worked and landed on him and just took him out. 
<laughs> just like the nerve pinch. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. They're sensitive here. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, it like worked. And I was like, yeah, it worked. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, one of you has a secret relationship with one of the sword girlfriends. Who is it? <gasps> ah! <laughs> It's got to be Margaret. That's right <laughs> up her alley. All right. Which one is it? Brass, strings, woodwind, or percussion? You always have the... Uh, it's always the percussion. It's always the drummer. All about it's got to be the bass. percussion. It's always the drummer. <laughs> Good deal. They keep the rhythm. All right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, percussion has, uh, you know, brilliant yellow armor and fiery orange hair. Um and uh, also carries a massive war hammer. So it might be that you have matching hammers. Don't it was meant to be. It was meant to Hammer be. love. <laughs> All right. Uh, last but not least, one of you uh, <coughs> is completely untrusted by Nicodemus. That leaves one of you remaining. It's uh, me. <laughs> what did you do to what did you do to lose Nicodemus's trust? I have a lot of magical abilities that I have no idea what they do or how to control them. I know that I do them, <laughs> but I don't know where they come from and neither does anyone else. So I, I have an idea. So that happened. Um, I imagine maybe your duty back in court is, uh, it was one of those things like in the movie Willow. It's like this year I will take on an apprentice and it ended up being you. And Nicodemus had like rigged the gambling bones and everything. But it was still you. <laughs> so the magic actually chose you. So Nicodemus has always been like, oh, they ruined my Ponzi scheme. Because um, <laughs> scheming Nicodemus is most certainly not scheming. I still don't know he's a schemer, is the thing. I don't think God. he does either. <laughs> oh no, naivety. He only has, has just thought that Kai's undone them. <laughs> That's it. All right. Um, so currently you're traveling south. Um and we're going to establish uh, what each of you is doing at the Spring Festival when the attack happened. So uh, let's start with Kai. Kai, what would you have been doing in Capital? There was a massive festival. What was Kai's responsibility? Uh, so my relationship is um, with the festival, we are meant to hang these lights that uh, burn for no less than, um, than 11 days. And um, it's my job. <laughs> as one of the Magi's apprentice to go around and make sure those remain lit. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, got it. So you were in the process of uh, uh, monitoring the lights. Um, when the attack happened, how did you evade the combatants? And how did you end up falling in line with Nicodemus and uh, Leofonzo? Um, when the attack actually happened, uh, Kai was pretty far away from it and, and rushed in to try to help as many people as possible and ran into Nicodemus on the way in. And it was at that point that he killed his first man. Ooh. Oh no, feel bad. You're soft. No, I'm soft. <laughs> oh gosh, no, this isn't that one. Y'all are soft. I'm not going <laughs> to He didn't mean to. It was like a panic punch. And I think use of the magic in that in that point um, really was the you second thing that led Nicodemus to mistrust him. You touched them and they withered completely. I want to show you were like in a mech suit as well. And like the suit withered and they were like, no. And then, yeah. Oof. Spooky. Um <laughs> Margaret, what were you doing at the festival? Uh, you might have been uh, with the sword girlfriends, or yeah, I else. feel like I was. I was like on a date, but when you date one sword girlfriend, you date all the sword girlfriends. I know that life. <laughs> <laughs> like you have to date them all. So I was technically there taking percussion out, but I really have to take percussion and the whole band out. Oh gosh, they made a big thing about it too. Yeah, so I'm currently world. trying to scrounge um, enough money to get us all cotton candy um, so that I can appease all of the the ladies. I'm making a note here that it's Margaret and her merry band. Right? <laughs> like, 
It's like <laughs> Band of Blades, right? Actually. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely Band of Blades. That feels right. Yes, Margaret and her merry <laughs> band. Um, and uh, uh, Kitty, what were you doing uh, at the uh, Spring Festival? What was going on when the attack came? <laughs> Okay, I'm not making sure I wasn't muted. <laughs> I, or Kitty, was sneaking into the, the Spring Festival and <laughs> trying to make fun things happen, like distract people with small fireworks that they had built so that they could steal their children. It's fine, don't worry about it. When the attack happened, they realized that they would probably be a lot more help trying to sneak people out of the festival instead of continuously trying to sneak around it. They helped get a lot of people out. All right, all right. Now, uh, strange. This is not doing what I want it to do. Um, we'll get back to that. Um, what led you to come in contact with Nicodemus, the Sword Girlfriends, uh, and the Noble Child um, to make your escape? To you said to make my escape. Uh, you all would have escaped together eventually, and I'm trying to uh, connect you to that group. Uh, when I w when they were running back and forth, trying to help people get out, don't think they even realized or recognized who they were. They're just like, Psst, follow me over here. They're like, of course, suspicious person will follow you away from the danger. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's exactly how it worked. And uh, last but not least. Ten. Uh, what was Ten up to during uh, the Spring Festival before the attack came? And then what led you to uh, fall in line with the others? Uh, ten was participating in the melon cutting contest where you take a melon and you throw it in the air and you're supposed to cut it into as many pieces as possible before it hits the ground. Um, <laughs> ten, however, Ponce, like throws the melon up the air, sheaths his sword, and then just reaches out with a hand and the whole thing catches on lightning and explodes into a million pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, I win. <laughs> Every member of Margaret's Merry Band considers you a rival, by the way. Because they all tried some melon smashing and they're like, we don't take orders from you, respected leader. We take orders from Margaret. And like, they're all like that. However... Um, there's some tension there. Margaret only responds with that. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <Boop>. <laughs> and then Tim does the thing is like, oh, and then has like wipe melon off of his face. <laughs> it All did right. explode. So those of you that are in the uh, roll 20, I'm going to deal some asset cards to everybody. Uh, these are just assets you can have. They may or may not apply to what you said, but this you're going to be able to apply this at some point during the adventure. It just helps to see uh, they're all different. So uh, for the audience, uh, these are little perks that help people do difficult things. Because um, in Cypher System, you're going to be asked to do difficult things. And the first one of these has come up. You have been traveling for three days now. You are very low on supplies. Um, you... Uh, the sword girlfriends have done a pretty good job of foraging uh during the journey uh you know they're like we were all scouts we know how to live off the land uh however not all of them were very good scouts um brass and strings seem to be the most proficient at catching things however you are coming up on the road uh it is rumored that in the area there is a homestead and this homestead belongs to one Batten Kaitos. Uh, they are a, a a famous warrior, a legendary warrior, who used to serve uh, the old nobility back in the old wars. Batten Kaitos is a wolf person. So in this uh, world, you know, there's all sorts of beast folk and stuff like that. So uh, Batten is a wolf person. Um, and he is known as Kingless, though. So at a certain point, he broke off from the nobility. Um... Oh, interesting. However, it's up to you to find Batten Kaitos's homestead. How do you want to go about that? Uh, none of you have been in this area for quite some time. It's said to be somewhere in the wilderness. Um, 
Uh, okay, so we know he lives in this area, Baden Kaitos. We we don't know where to locate him, but he's a wolf person. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, can we? Um, Margaret like stops and strikes a pose, and um, uh, she puts one hand in the air. A strange snapping sound uh, as her finger reaches its apex, and she says, "I got it. <laughs> we should set a trap." Wolves love meat. All we need is a big old slab of steak. We ate the last of the big old slabs of steak. You did. You ate the last of the big old slabs of steak. <laughs> Her face gives that like red brow uh, and the single like drop of, of sweat of like, oh. Um, All right. The, uh, your merry band though says, but we had been saving some for you, Margaret. And they each hold up a slab of steak. You actually have four. <laughs> yeah, uh, she probably, in like one fell swoop, like snatches all the steaks uh, and doesn't spin around because she's a dancer. Um, and she again strikes a pose and she says, uh, Wait, how do you set a trap? <laughs> As if she just came up with the idea, but has no idea how to actually <laughs> complete it. Wait, you're muted. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> you say the word trap and the face just comes on the screen. You're like, yes, <laughs> I, I heard trap. Uh, I toss four large cuts of meat your direction. <laughs> <laughs> Not even looking like I'm already starting. So I just go. Ch, 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 ch. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, kind of look around and see what I got here and go, I, this, hammer. Uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> like four hammers come out. <laughs> just like, thrown okay. by the sword girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I just hold up this piece of sheet metal and it hits it the way I need it to and go, thanks. <laughs> gonna set up, uh, it essentially sort of looks like, you know, when somebody tries to set up a trap and it's like the stick with the box and then the meat set. <laughs> It essentially looks like that. Like, it's like a way rabbit trap. It's way more complicated than that, but it, that's what it looks like. And you're like, perfect. I buy it. Margaret buys it. So you're going to fabricate a trap uh, designed to capture a famous warrior. Um, a famous warrior. Yes. So Baton Kaitos was uh, used to be guardian of the king. Um <laughs> Go ahead, and I'm going to keep the difficulty somewhat secret. Actually, no, I'll tell you. It would be a difficulty six to capture Baton Kaitos if he's walking about. But you can make uh, a trap. And he may have assistance that you end up capturing instead, and then he comes out looking for him. Uh, So... It's going to be an 18 or higher on a 20 side die, but you might have things that help you reduce this, as well as spending uh, effort and uh, reducing the difficulty. So it starts at a six. I'm trying to see if I have anything. Can I create an asset um, by uh, taking one of the slabs of meat um and then just sort of wringing it out and making like a path like like the stuff that goes to the actual trap yes (laughs) uh kai looks very (laughs) like i can't believe i'm doing this this is so that'll that'll reduce it to a five so you need a 15 or higher on a 20 side die a 20 side die okay you can also spend effort can spin effort. So with that, yeah, again, um, I'm just gonna take the chance. This is first roll, I'm just gonna take a chance, see what happens. That works. You. That <laughs> twenty. So there's a major effect. Uh, so that. Uh, now, did you roll a d20 or one d20? I yeah, thought I rolled like just the one. No, yeah, you did it. You rolled a nat 20. Wow. You know, uh, so not only do you capture Bat and Kaidos, <laughs> like, and here's kind of what happens. 
I gotta describe this to you. Please. Uh, this uh, wolf-faced gentleman wearing uh, light armor and carrying a sword's like, so what you doing there? And you're like, I'm making a trap for you. And he's like, well, that's that's ridiculous. I've never fall for a trap. It, completely bound. You caught him, and he is at your mercy. Um, and you, he didn't even eat any of the steak, so you could possibly catch him again. Uh, and alas, that that is the current situation. So you have captured the former member of the King's Guard. He's dangling upside down by this tree, and he's, like, very hungry. He can smell all the blood and the steak juices in the area. That's the whole thing, like, the ringed steak. And he's like, it's perfectly good meat. <laughs> all right. So, uh, what do you want to do? You've captured the wolf. The sun is setting. He's and we like, needed to we needed to capture him for a reason. Well, uh, uh, you know that he w- he's he's the only place you could probably stay on the road that would be safe. He's a famous warrior. Ah, uh, so I you see. Decided we, to oh, we're seeking him refuge, and we just captured <laughs> yes, him. <laughs> yes, which is hilarious, by the way. I like that. Got it. Um. <laughs> Uh, he's, okay. he's like, all right, you've caught me. Yeah, uh, I will drag one of the slabs of meat over um, and dangle it out really, really far so that he can get it without, like, fearing that he's going to bite my arm off. He and wouldn't. He's a gentleman. He's like, he's a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, he's a bad one. He's the a, gen- he's okay, a, um, he's eat your hand if your pinky's off. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. he, he 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 takes the steak and like he kind of gets it and like his little tails between his legs his ears are all down and he's just like sheepishly this once great and proud warrior um and uh pardon my intrusion yes <laughs> take one of these? sure why not yeah let's see how this goes let's see do i have the right deck all right so we'll see what it is so uh just so everyone knows, I have a, a deck, and um, I'm going to pull a random card, and that's what the oh. uh, card's going to be. And we will see what it is. So I'm going to deal myself a card, and we will see what we get. Um, all right. <laughs> so oh, the no. NPC is trying to impress someone who is watching. Uh, so... Um, <laughs> he's like as as you're feeding the steak to him he throws his eyes at percussion your sword girlfriend and she kind of sticks her hands on her hips and then he like wolfishly grins like <laughs> as he laps down the steak percussion's like but something going on there I probably do the eye cut they're like oh oh uh, between them, um, and yeah, was brass it... tambourine or brass uh, winds, uh, brass woodwind and strings all go ooh, just like that because they all know they're on a date, but they know there was a different date. <laughs> I'm on the most public date of all time, uh, escaping a, a war yes. zone. Um, how very anime. I uh, go over to the dangling wolf man, and um, I say, hey. Explain yourself. You're supposed to be a gentleman. I am. I I ate the uh, offered food. You were offering it to me, and I ate it. Say, you look awfully familiar. And he kind of sniffs. <laughs> she goes, I'm Margaret Armstrong. Of the family Armstrong. It goes way back. I'm familiar. Yeah. You work. You yeah. work. You work in the king's palace. You 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 you're. you're in league with the nobility. I'm a magical warrior. <laughs> well, apparently, if you caught me, by the way, uh, that one is very wily and intelligent. Kind of looks over at Kitty. Can someone let me down, though? At night's falling, and we will get eaten by dangerous creatures. There's dragons in these yeah. parts. Yeah, <laughs> ten. A, a sword boomerang comes out of the woods <laughs> and cuts the wire. Nice. <laughs> Back Snaps, to him. Falls. Tonk, birds flying around his head, and then uh, he he gets up. Uh, we're going to fast forward uh, to the home of Bat and Kytos. Now there is a large barn behind uh, the house. You can see because the barn doors are open. There is a giant Gaimalef, a giant mecha 
suit of armor in there uh, that was once his. Um, and uh, Batten speaks, and he asks your group, what brings a wizard as famous as Nicodemus, um, a wizard as unfamous as Kai, uh, an engineer uh, that is as renowned as Kitty, uh, an illustrious member of the Armstrong family, a sword person I've never seen before, <coughs> and the merry band. What brings you out to my homestead? I have not seen or had visitors in a long, long time. Not unfamous, all right? <laughs> and yet to be famous. I'm heading to the Empress, the Bronze Empress, to ask her about um, if she could help us. Thanks for your hospitality, by the way. Do you ever use that thing? Points up that the uh, the guy Malov. Used to. It's been a number of years since we we're at war with the Bronze Empire, actually, when we repelled their invasion, and they formed an alliance with us. Does it still work? Uh, it should. I mean, oh. we service it once a week. <laughs> Do you service it once a week? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Take it out for a spin. But uh, yeah, you're traveling south. Well, I can give you a place to stay, and right about then, uh, oh, also uh, for the intrusion and taking the intrusion, uh, uh, Bunny, you get one experience point, and you can give another experience point to someone else. Okay. So, uh, Batten Kaitos, and, you know, it's one of those things. He's feeding everyone very well. He's caught some elk. He has some vegan options. You know, he's he is a wolf of many talents. Um, there's a big <laughs> roaring fire. Yes. And then uh, there's all sorts of uh, fine paintings on the wall, tapestries that are hanging. It's a very well-kept house. Uh, there are no servants here, though. Uh, Batten lives alone. Uh, he essentially is one that is considered exiled, more or less, since he stepped down from his noble's position. Um, <laughs> right about then, I need, uh, 10 make a perception check for us. Okie dokie. And you get an asset, uh, because one of the sword girlfriends is kind of hanging around you. I, think it's I rolled a nine. You rolled a nine. Uh, there is definitely movement in the trees outside. Uh... Like, tens, it's not tens small been sitting by the window. Like, they're just, probably some of them are being knocked over. Yeah. Uh, Ten just kind of gives the rest of the team a nod, and just like swords out. You mean hammers out? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, I mean hammers out. <laughs> Outside the window, between uh, the building you are in and the mech in the bar, a mech materializes it's floating in the air um arms sprout out and it has two what looks like flamethrowers and right about then i need you to roll for initiative because it's about oh to set my. my house on fire oh my yeah 19 okay. we're gonna call her maggie that's a way more of I'm gonna call her Maggie to make it easy. What do we need? Maggie about? and her Mary Ben. And you get plus three to that, I think, because of your uh, Maggie Arms training. Maggie. Oh, that am I? Am I trained? Uh, am I trained in skills? Adding that to Bunny, I think. Oh. Show. <laughs> and uh, so let's see. We have two nineteens, uh, sixteen, and eight. Um, you are all going except for Kai uh, before these guy lifts, these uh, villainous mecha. So... Struggling to get my shield out of my bag. <laughs> it's it stuck. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's start. Let's let's go with Maggie first. All right. Um, we see they they break out flamethrowers. You said are they are they dousing his house or the trees? He's, they're going, the intention most likely is the house, but they might speak to you before they do it. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, are we on like a first floor? Or do I need to like jump out of a window? Because I'll be extra. You're on a second floor. Right. It is extra time. Um, uh, I I turn to the the merry band um, and I say, weapons out. Time to smash some robots. And I run and dive through the <laughs> the window uh, and outside to like stick a landing and put myself between the mechas and the the building. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a test difficulty three. Go ahead and roll 20 side dice or nine or higher. And, it's just okay. and I believe actually, let me just double check this. I think I'm trained. You probably are. Um, Involving balance and careful movement. You're trained in all tasks involving balance and careful movement. I would count that. All right, cool. Love it. Great. Rolling a 20 and a 14. Okay, they kind of look down at you. They roast you. No. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kitty, you're up. Okay. Uh, so you, <laughs> I just watched you jump out the window. <laughs> and... I would like, I have a tinker thing that lets me look around and uh, kind of build anything out of anything. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the, all the food and stuff is still there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> food shooter. Go, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm just going <laughs> to kind of just like throw it, stick it on the window and just kind of like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I got your back <laughs> and just, <laughs> just cover you while you're going after. <laughs> Like silverware and plate, <laughs> food. Maybe I can gunk up the flamethrowers. You might be able to go ahead and uh, so to gunk up the flamethrowers. It's a task difficulty six. So six. eighteen or higher. All right, and rolling my d twenty. Let's see if it's nice like it has been. Um, <clears throat> roll neat. Uh, it's one of those things where it's like, ha, ha, and you throw, and it kind of goes halfway, and it like splits Maggie in the back of the head. And... Oh! Yeah. No. I... Sorry, got to recalibrate it. <laughs> it's a... Hold on, hold on. Those are tests. Those are tests, everybody. This, These are tests. This is a test. <laughs> All right, and ten. Uh, ten is going to take a gleam at this thing. He's going to have a big eye sheen. Because uh, one of his eyes is actually a robotic eye. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> um, and I'm going to use Data Jack, which just gives me an asset on my next interact, or I get an asset involving that person or object. All right. As, as I'm watching. You, as you Data Jack and you watch, you pick up, there are two more that are still invisible out there. Okay. Mm. They're big and they're scary. Yeah, that's no great. Um, but I, I think. Unless I can just, like, fall out the window. <laughs> I don't think I can do that as an immediate movement. They're going to go, okay. Uh, first thing that they're going to do is they're going to shout. They go, hand over Nicodemus and the child, and we will not burn this homestead down. Hand over Nicodemus and the child, and we will not burn this homestead down. <laughs> A second voice calls out, and it goes, what are you waiting for? Burn it down! And he appears, and he just starts setting the house on fire. So one tried to negotiate in another one. And they're like, Disastros, no! You know, just like that. So Disastros has appeared, and he is- Disastros, uh, yes! Yeah, so their names, these these members of the Grey Legion are known as the Faith Breakers. They are Disastros, Lemon, and Lime. So, uh... <laughs> Sounds like so, my perfect margarita. I was saying, that's like <laughs> Like, it needs a little salt on the edge. <laughs> That's disastrous. Is special. <laughs> Extra salt. Oh, disastrous. Yeah. So yeah, disastrous uh, moves to set the house on fire, and it begins to burn. So the house is now on fire, and Batten Kaitos kind of looks, uh, and he he looks at Ten, and he looks at himself. He's like, "We're going to have to get to my guy, my left, and we're going to have to repel them." Admiral Akbar, um, it's a trap. Um, <laughs> So, Batten kind of uh, leaps from the window, and he attempts to uh, land a sword swipe uh, right in the middle of one of the Gaimalefs. And uh, you see he lands on the one that had its uh, 
guns ready, its flamethrowers ready, and he stabs right through the slit in the visor, and you just hear it, Gah! and that one starts to fall down. So he leapt from the building and just did a sword stab. Um, uh, with that, Kai, you're up. Thank you. Uh, so sorry, are these people in Gaimalus as well, or are they like they are outside? In they're, I, they're in. They're in. They're much smaller than the one you saw. Oh, great! Uh, so I'm gonna like pull my shield finally out <laughs> of the bag and go. Who are they calling a child? Who's the kid? I don't look around. Am I the kid? No, you see Leah Fonzo. Leah Fonzo is like trying oh, to hide cheap. Yeah, you. we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> all right, great. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a beeline. Um, to uh, Baden Kaidos's Gaimalef, and I want to just try to bash one of them in the face on the way. Sure. Um, and I, I scream, Starlight Shield Blast, as I do so. <laughs> All right. Now, so the thing about them is their Gaimalefs are much taller than you would, you could. Reach. I will hit them That's in quite... the knee. Yeah, you can definitely <laughs> try to knee spike them. Uh, go ahead and roll to attack. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 10, so. No, not quite good enough. Uh, so it's one of those things where it goes, dong, and it, like, kind of jiggles your arm, too. Your funny bone tickles. Um, Blast! But you're making your way. Um, Blast! <laughs> Blast! <laughs> so good. Nicodemus. Nicodemus pulls out a wand and uh, points it in the air and creates a shield around himself and Leofonzo, and they're in, like, a little floating bubble now. The sword girlfriends pull out every weapon from the hells below and start running out and start bashing at these giant mech warriors. They're like, nobody gets <laughs> mud on Margaret's hair! You know, and it's just kind of like, even if it was from their own teammate at that point. So now uh, we go back to the top of uh, initiative and it's Maggie's turn. All right. Um, Maggie Maggie whips away the, the food on her head uh, and uh, she sees the one that's burning the house. She does not like that at all. And she swings her like giant hammer forward and points right at the mech. And um, wow, okay, yeah, at this twelve foot tall thing. Um, and she she says um, she says his hospitality is greater than your evil ways. You will not prevail. Um, and she runs and is going to like take a giant swing at this this thing with her hammer. Her All magic right. hammer. Swing, swing, swing. Let me know what you get. It's going to be a test difficulty five to hit it. Um, all right. Let's see what I've got. Because I'm pretty sure I'm practiced with all weapons. Automatic, but action rolls still made to make action right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, I'm going to use Bash, which is a pummeling melee attack. And it flicks one less point of damage than normal, but Daze is my target for a round if I hit. So let's do this. And I'm going to use some effort. One effort out of 15. Can I do it? 15 is good enough. All right, 100%. cool. Phew. Um, I'm, a hammer is considered... I don't know how much damage, damage a hammer actually does. Well, one here's the thing about... You, well, think of it this way. So they're giant armored things. Mm -hmm. However, you notice that your hammer, as you swing, uh, actually puts a significant dint in the armor, where it, it seems like it's very upset at you. <laughs> oh, wait! I I do an additional three points of damage against robots. Ooh. Because I battle robots. That's my foci. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Your whole team's like, woo! And they all hold up, you know, their cheers, their weapons of hell. Uh, and and with that, it is Kitty's turn. Okay, so I had to recalibrate my my mega potato launcher because it, it missed the last time. But every, at this point, nobody else is in this place but me. Right? I think uh, everybody else has jumped out. Everyone else has and, jumped out. It's starting to burn. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna leave this. <laughs> like, who do you use my movement to leave? Everybody else is just gonna like go. Well, everybody else is doing it, and the, and take the uh, the piece off of the, the the weird thing that I built that's shooting. 
the food and jump out and shoot it at the ground so that I don't so that I don't hurt myself going down towards the ground. Okay. Uh, before you jump, though, we'll just grab the surrounding. You notice as it's burning, there is a massive, like, war chest in the room uh, that's just calling your name, and it has an emblem of the royal seal on it. Um, and it's one of those things, you're getting ready to jump, but you also see that in the house that's burning. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah. <laughs> just run over there real quick. It is a chest full open. of ciphers. So, uh, yes, you, you have that, so you'll be able to dole out a bunch of goodies to everyone outside the building. Um, yes. uh, so with that, um, we're actually going to say you get that and you will also get out. So you'll start your next turn outside. Um, um, you're able to descend without too much difficulty because the house is falling. Um, uh, 10. I go for the guy in the left. Woo, swing. <laughs> I want to jump in. Oh, you're going for bat and kytoses. All right, so you get it. You're going to need to uh, operate this thing. Have you ever right. operated one before? I have training in piloting. Okay, so we're going to assume that you get in. Bat and kytos looks up at you and he kind of whimpers. He's like, but I was going to. And you should not nah, your thing then. <laughs> he's like, nah, it's your time. It's your time to shine, boy. Show us what you got. Show us your best move. Do I, like, right. flip switches, or is it, like, crystals and stuff? You get in, and it's going to ratch around you. There's going to be switches, uh, but it's uh, there's a little crystal, uh, like, circlet that goes around your head, and you're going to have to become one with it. So, All right. This is going to be uh, a task difficulty six to merge with it for the first time. Uh, does piloting help? Yes, 100%. Uh, could I negate? No, I don't want to do that. Never mind. It has to imprint uh, itself on your brain. Okay. And then if I'm going to spend effort, which pool is that from? <coughs> intellect or might. Okay. We're doing intellect then. All right. So 19. You're going to get a little bonus too. So it, it's like 10. I haven't seen you in many years. It kind of speaks with this, uh, uh, gosh, Skylinks. That was the Transformer. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Tin, I have not seen you in many, many a day. So Skylinks, like, essentially starts imprinting on your brain. And he's like, ah, we shall slay many Gaimalefs together. At ease. Um, and you are now in control of that Gaimalef. Um, All right. And so the way that's going to work is you're essentially level six against smaller level things. So you're going to have uh, advantages and you just kind of describe your goals. So if the goal is to cut it in half, just tell me you want to cut it in half. Um, <laughs> but we'll have to see. Um, so the baddies. Uh, Bat and Kytos whimpering as he's looking, his sword stabbed in the visor of one. Um, it's brutish hands. Grab him. And crush him. So he just kind of squeaks. Bat and Kytos is no more. One of the baddies just smushed him. Uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these things, while very gallant and very brave, is also very, very dangerous. Uh, however, you are heroes who are trained to fight these things. So be very careful. Um, and uh, Disastros continues to burn uh, the house, and he's just shouting, Burn! Burn! But then he looks and he sees uh, Kitty, who has recently gotten out. Kitty, I need you to make a speed defense roll to dodge and get out of the way because he's going to try to roast you. Okay. So speed. And yeah, I think I have. I would like to use some uh, from my pool for speed if I can. You absolutely can. Highly awesome. recommended. Yeah, highly recommend. Okay. And then I would just... So you use some from your pool, though. That's going to be enough. Because it would typically be 15. So Yeah, I, I pushed the button. I thought I was pushing the advanced thing so I could add the, the numbers to it, and I just hit the roll. No worries. Yeah, it's one of those things where he thinks he shot you, but Kitty's so fast that it was actually like... Like a blur effect, almost like what? 
what? Or just after effect. Uh, you know, and just starts getting more and more angry as uh, Disastrous turns uh, their head and kind of looks, eyes twitching uh, as they become more frustrated. Uh, and with that, Kai, you're on deck. Great. Um, Kai's going to clamber on to onto the guy Malef and hold on just a moment because uh, I want to make sure that Kitty gets on safe. I like just climbing up, putting the she- stow in the shield real quick and like looking back just in time to see like this fiery jet come out of the house and almost hit them. And he's like, uh, all right, hold on. <laughs> so he's going to prevent an asset yeah. or whatever needs to happen there. Yeah. Kitty's Kitty's making their way over. Also at this point, uh, when you're on the, the guy, Malef, uh, you can hear it speaking to you as well. It's like, young Kai, uh, the soon to be famous uh, spellcaster. Welcome. Uh, yeah, that, that's me. Soon to... And you, you notice uh, where you're like sort of standing on the uh, shoulder, like a shoulder turret like rises up out of the ground. And it's like, so at any point, if you ever want to like pea shoot at something, uh, you can, uh, as well as. Uh, it has a different setting to the, the other one's kind of like a bondo putty to try to patch it up if it's taken any damage. Um, mm. Yeah, it's one of those things where uh, you are now given access to some of it. Ooh, can I use that this turn or do? Uh, what would you like to use it on? I'm I'm wondering. Oh god, this is Marcy moments. Um, I'm wondering if I can fire that putty at one of the other Gaimalefs to try to gunk them up. A hundred percent, in fact. Okay, so here's how it works. Um, To gunk them up, it's going to increase the task difficulty by two. Uh, They are uh, level five. It's going to be difficulty level six to start. However, you have Ethan helping pilot, which Mm -hmm. will automatically reduce. It Typically, it'd be a seven, but you're a higher level uh, guy, Malef. So All right, I would like to spend effort on that. Which pool would you like me to remove that from? Uh, speed or might or intellect. Which it, it, This is sort of the weird thing. Describe to me how you're doing it. So just sort of put the fiction first. So like um, one of my abilities is actually entangling force. That's that's one of the things that I kind of like. I, I already have a magical understanding of how to um, encase things I think and I'm wondering if I could extend that so I would be using intellect not that intellect is my highest pool anyway but oh yeah so and here's kind of how I envision it your Mm -hmm. mind is speaking with the guy Malef I need to name this person uh he's just gonna be Foxfire so Foxfire is like ah yes uh yes yes you you are a natural you are a, a prodigy yes uh so you can uh spend intellect Cool. It's almost like you're working out equations and magical words together. The grammar of magic is being shared between your two brains. There's grammar. It's pretty good. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try to play to them. Ha! I rolled a one. I'm going to spend an XP to re-roll that. Okay. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this I trusted a- you. Oh, is this, this brain? Is brain? <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> the grammar of magic. Oh, I erased the language function. Sorry. Oh, no, the verbs are gone. The time is in 18. Woo, that's so much better. It does a little extra bonus gunk. So it's like, uh, so that's, that is uh, brilliant. And you're, one of the guy on my left is, it's like solid as a rock now. Like you hit it with this Bondo, which is massive because your guy on my left is much bigger. It just hits it with like a wall of clay and it's like encased now. And the sword girlfriends are like, woo, they're like playing, you know, they're just wailing on it. Uh, with that, yes, yes, chat, bonus gunk, the best gunk of all. Uh, with that... Because um, you didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> uh, hey. Right about now, um, one of the guy molests uh, has been uh, stabbed, one has been gunked. Uh, Disastros is the last one that is uh, remaining. Um, Disastros... Uh, sort of sees this going on, sees that Lemon and Lime have been defeated for the moment, um, and is going to make a desperate attempt to snatch uh, the magic bubble that's holding Nicodemus and Leofonzo. 
How would the party like to prevent this? Can I? Oh. What's in my chest? Well, what's in the chest that I got out of the house? <laughs> well, there's lungs. Um, my heart, our friendship, the real magic we made of love. Why are there so many hearts in this battle chest? <laughs> So I'm going to deal some power cards. So there's a bunch of weird looking... Uh, I'll a fastball special me. I'll bring oh. the visor of the guy I'm left with my shield. So I've, I've dealt a bunch of uh, cipher powers to everyone. And you can pick any on these. And what we have to do is we have to translate it uh, from the strange into ethical flow next. So if we have to change some words, we can do that. And uh, if you'd like some cheap little forms uh, for how these might look. Gosh darn it, roll 20. Do the... T yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's acting weird. Um, you can look at the magic forms on this sheet and you can say that this is how it looks when you use it. So, um, you know, so the, a cloudy elixir in a glass bottle and it, uh, you know, is a dev module. For the next minute, it's, you know... This, it you add the cipher level to damage or something like that. So, um, yeah. So you, you've just been handed uh, a bunch of ciphers. So there's all these various, say, bottles and trinkets and amulets and things, um, and you can activate uh, these things to use them at any time. Um. All right. It's going to reach for this bubble. Yeah, it's going to try to snatch them. Um. Can I spin? Oh, I'm going to Thor the hell out of this. I want to spin my hammer really, really fast and make like a wind tunnel to push the bubble out of the way of the, the hand. You're going to cro croquet it? Basically. Okay. Um, Can I do that? Yeah, what's the name of your special technique? Uh, um, it's called... Uh, we call it hammer time! Um, I like strike a pose and I'm like... Okay, so it's going to be a test difficulty five to do this. So uh, you spend some points, and then it's going yeah. to be a might, might check. I'll do, okay, it's going to be might. So I will use, uh, yeah, I'm going to use some effort. I'm going to use an effort. Uh, <laughs> Can I use the uh, XP that I have to help them? Uh, um, not quite. Holy make sure I don't have any kind of cipher that's gonna. I don't think so. Okay, here we go. All right, I will use one edge. Um, I assume you're trained in your weapon, which would. Also I am trained in the weapon. Yeah. That was only an eleven, though. Still. Okay, so you rolled an eleven. Um, you would have needed a twelve. If you wield, yeah, I was about to say. I guess your... I could use it. I have one XP left. I could re-roll it. Well, I was gonna oh. say you used effort, right? Yeah, I did. So you used effort and you're trained. And uh, I know there's like rules about it. It's like, oh, well, you're just not penalized. In this situation, I think for the special hammer move, uh, just spend an additional two points from your might and we'll say the cyclone pushes it just all the way. So it's one of those things where disastrous is reaching and then just kind of like the wind blows it up and the bubble's just a little too high. Looks back and um, uh, Kitty, you're on deck. You're playing okay. keep away. You're like pushing the bubble. Pushing. <laughs> um, so uh, because uh, everybody's out here and we're all interacting with the different Gaimalefs and everything, uh, I have something that I think I can use. Oh. Um, let me make sure it is. Um, you were trained in town for purposes. Oh, that's really fair. The robot jolts your foe. Wait, uh, how far away am I from the from R? The big, the big twenty twenty foot tall. I, you're a, roughly a move action, so. Okay. How, yeah, describe what you want to try to do, and we can work out something to kind of rule. Okay. Uh, what I want to try to do is get over to our guy, our big guy on the left, and see if there's anything I can do with it to boost its power to make its attack stronger so it can take out the Oh. Um, because we've been interacting with it, if I uh, yep. interact with something for like 
I think it said like longer than like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> then, Hasn't quite been right, that long, right, but what you can do is you can try to. So there's several uh, weapons. There's uh, the big bad sword. There's the missile turret, and there's also the rocket fist. So which one do you want to modify? Rocket fist, missile turret, or big bad sword? Ooh. This one those real questions they ask you in video games. <laughs> <laughs> Quick time event. Which one? Uh, <laughs> and, 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 gonna, and if you pick the wrong one, he's gonna like rocket fist his own face. No, I'm gonna do the uh, uh choices. I'm gonna do the uh, rocket fist. Okay. Uh, so in order to do this quickly, uh, it, it's it's a big thing and it's a pretty complicated and it takes a lot of work. Uh, but we'll climb you, in there. It'll, yeah, it'll be it'll be a test difficulty puller. Uh, you can do it. Hmm? I couldn't hear you. You, you clicked out for me. Test, test of what? Four. Hmm. Okay. You need a 12 or higher on the dice. 12 or higher. Um, I, I'm going to use things. <laughs> uh, I would like to use two for my pool. Okay. Uh, do, would that uh, would you uh, be That'll speed? Would that do it quickly or might? Or? Um... This is intellect. Ooh. Okay. All right. Are you being paid? Roll 10. So you lowered it uh, from 12 to a 9, I believe. Uh, at least, so. Mm. Uh, hold on, you rolled an eight. Uh, oh, I thought I was supposed to add the two. No. Oh, the, uh, lower yeah, the difficulty, so not add to my roll. Yeah. That's my fault. I apologize. <laughs> well, let's double check. So you had a four. You spent some points, so you lowered it to a three. Do you have any sort of training in this on your sheet? Like, do you say you have any training with tinkering or anything? Yeah. Working uh, with robots? It, yeah, I have Tinker. It's one intellect point. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. You're using your Tinker ability, so that's how it works. And then you rolled, and uh, I assume that you have some training in working on these robots. It's one of those things since we're, uh, we're kind of... <laughs> one losing. of my things is literally called Robot Builder. Yeah, so it's the, we'll say that it would have been a six for you. And then, uh, yeah, so you managed to modify the rocket fist, and then, you know, you kind of hear Foxfire's voice. He's like... I feel my power growing. And then, like, the rocket fist starts to expand, and he starts to get, like, one giant boulder hand. <laughs> Whoa! And it's one of these things where it's, like, steam shooting out of it now. Uh, meanwhile, in the inside, uh, uh, Ten, you feel, like, one of your hands burning. What do you want to do? Um, well, my, my plan was uh, I'm going to electrocute the hand and then fire it off. And I'm aiming specifically for the gas tank powering the flamethrowers. Okay. You want to destroy I know it's the there. tank? Yes. Yes. And your little data check. Doo -doo -doo, boop. Yeah. I'm a spending little... that asset. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be a skill shot. Um, that type of shot adds five to the difficulty. So uh, you are in a higher level, Guy Malef, so that reduces it from 10 to 9. You're spending an asset, so it's an 8. Bring it down. You know you can do this. We math this out before. I know. Okay. Uh, do I get anything for piloting? Yes. Okay. The piloting reduces it. So you go 8 to 7. Do it. This is what um, it's all about. I'm spending effort. You're spending effort. So uh, how much effort? I only have one rank. That's why I, I always did advance that extra effort. And I'm gonna, I have four time. XP. I'm going to do it right now. Okay, you're <laughs> so using the first. It's one of those things you hear a voice. It's like the ghost of Batten Kaitos appears next to you, and he's like, Do it. I yeah. trust in you, my son. son All right. Son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're double efforting. So you go from, uh, what was that? Count down with me. Uh, we're at five. So Oh, okay, Ten I thought it was six. Nine. Okay, now it's five. Thanks. I trust Ethan. He's a math magician. Yeah, no, I agree. Six. 
We're at six. Because it's guide left level uh, training, two levels of effort. Okay, but you had an asset as well. Oh, yeah. Five. Okay. You just got Marcy'd. No. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have second guessed myself. Um, all right. And I don't know if it being on lightning does anything. No, that won't do anything. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, just, that's just fun flavor. It's cosmetic. Yeah. Um, all right, so you're going to need uh, 15. 15. <laughs> Sixteen. Woo! Woo! Just Astros almost gets his hands onto the orb that was slowly floating away, then boom! Explodes. Nice. And so uh, the battle ends. Uh, Disastros and the Faith Breakers have been defeated. Um, with that, we're going to take a short break. Uh, yeah. Take about five as we have finished uh, the first of many anime battles, or at least uh, one big anime <laughs> battle. Then we get into all the schmoopsy romance after this. But who Ooh, were those faith breakers? Those break schmoopsies. Why did Disastros want to capture uh, uh, whatever that child's name was? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Leo. laughs> Leo Fonzo, that Leo was the Fonzo. name. Leo Fonzo. Now we go to the house. So stay tuned, and we will be back in a few.
we're back. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are back from our much-needed break after a little bit of a mech battle uh, to kick off our Sunday uh, special edition uh, game. Uh, I want to remind everybody, if you are here, we want to thank you. Uh, if you haven't already followed the channel, please do so. Uh, it costs you nothing, and you get to know every time we start live shenanigans like today's game. Um, and, uh, yeah, and make sure to follow on social as well if you haven't done that. And uh, last but certainly not least, there is a star, I believe, down below. Uh, I called it the magic star. I didn't know what else to call it. Uh, but you guys can fill that magic star with bits and tips. Uh, and when you do so, and the star fills, I'm sure that that if it fills, uh, Grant will make sure that magic happens. Um, or maybe it's magic plus. Who knows? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that's my spiel. I'll pass it back off to, to Grant. Blah, 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 yakety schmackety. It's back to me. <laughs> let's, get this, let's get this road show on the, I was going to say, let's get this road on the show as my pattern. That's how I do say. it. Yeah, so uh, when last we left our intrepid heroes, uh, they had uh, defeated uh, the pursuing faith breakers, disastrous Lemon and Lime, uh, who had torched the home of Bat and Kytos, who died tragically uh, attempting to save our friends. Um we now have a decision to make. Um, we know that we are being pursued by the, uh, the Grey Legion. Do we want to travel as far down the road as we can as possible towards the Bronze Empire, uh, taking our newfound Foxfire Gaimaleth? Or do we want to sneak into the woods and try to uh, find a uh, more secluded area to camp for the night? Mm. Take the path less traveled. Uh, so the choice is yours. You can talk it out amongst yourselves. You can also talk to NPCs that are traveling with you. Okay. Um, yeah, Margaret, um, after checking on all of her girlfriends um, to make sure that they're okay, uh, she will look at the rest of the Intrepid team, as you used to put it. Um, and she says, This plan's burning as fast as that house. I think that we should hit the road and keep moving. We wouldn't be on the road, though. You're off, because you did, you came off the road to get to the homestead. But didn't you uh, say the fastest way, to, the like... The fastest way would yeah. be to get back onto the road and take it south. Otherwise, yeah. you're just trekking over wilderness. It's hard. Yeah. Requires some orienteering. We can move quickly and efficiently. Right, ladies? Road trip! They all ah! say. We all jump mid-air and freeze. <laughs> <laughs> how do they, know how they do that? <laughs> but I agree with them. In the gravity-defying ways, it'd be faster if we did that. And I don't see why we could, why we shouldn't. I, I have nothing to contest this. Help. I mean, we're already... My concern is they might know where we are and where we're going. Oh. Um, Nicodemus <laughs> says, no, there's a shrine of the purple possum not too far from here that perhaps we could camp in for the evening. Oh. I know how to get there. Margaret Tibble says, ah! That sounds great. But what about our road trip? Says uh, Strings. <laughs> Margaret I says, was really the looking road trip to is it. where you make it. You mean we're gonna be off-roading? They kind of tremble, but they're uh, willing to. <laughs> yes. Uh? <laughs> All right. Uh, Leah Fonzo uh, is looking very concerned at Kai. And then kind of back at Nicodemus, then back at Kai, and then keeps to himself. Uh, and with that, uh, it sounds like uh, that you're going to camp near the uh, uh, the Shrine to the Purple Possum. So <laughs> sure, who, would like, who would like to be uh, the Orienteer for this trip? Who thinks they are the best at uh, understanding the lay of the land and how to get there? Nicodemus counts as an asset because he's sure he's been there once before. <laughs> Until he tells us he has no memory of this place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always follow your nose. Um, um, 
He's like the worst though. He's like Yin Sid from the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, there's like <laughs> dancing broomsticks. Uh, like, what if he's leading us into a trap? But I like to spend uh, an scared? intellect. Uh, I yes, think yes. to spend an intellect point to use uh, premonition to learn a random fact about this shrine. Ooh. That might uh, and when I when I do this, I create a sigil with my hand and I go, "Marvelous moon shadow reveal." Marvelous moon shadow. Uh, and what were you trying to uh, make it about? Uh, I, I want to know more about the location. Maybe I've heard about a passage to get there in the past. Okay, so yes. And uh, you see uh, appearing before you, there's kind of these shadowy forms that manifest and they kind of dance before you. Uh, and then uh, they start to take shape. And there is a group of possum people who happen to be more of a mauve than a purple. Um, Would uh, you say they're a posse of possums? A posse of possums. <laughs> Are they a plethora of possum posses? Um, <laughs> so, uh, these possum folk, stay away from my garbage. You know, they just have like their garbage piles uh, outside their shrine. Um, however, on the shrine, there is the most beautiful sculptures you have ever seen. Unlike anything, nothing in capital has ever compared to this. Uh, it looks far more ancient, far more uh, ornate, and uh, that as if it was put together by a f more sophisticated hand. Uh, and it seems as if it's from a completely different era. Uh, the humanoid figures in these artwork are not possums, but they are in fact what look like to be angelic creatures. Um and uh, that seems to have a uh, significance with uh, the shrine. Um, then you see, uh, at a certain point, uh, the possums, uh, they all began to uh, abandon the shrine over time, like their faith began to break. Mm. A single possum, uh, the possum prime. Um, prime possum of the posse of purple possums. Yes. Uh, yeah, the possum prime has stayed and watched over that shrine and has passed down the duty of taking care of it from curator to curator for over a thousand years. Um, and with that, uh, you have discerned a little bit about the shrine. Excellent. I will turn to the group after casting my spell. <laughs> His, his eyes glaze over with like this, this darkness and then it clears up and he's like, all right, so if we head into the woods, there's a plethora of possum posses, which are purple, but there's a prime possum which remains after they expedited. They're full of trash though, so we might be able to follow a trash trail Pause to get <laughs> to them. Well, there's a giant turtle house that's eating the trash. No, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, oh, no. I'll look there, there's our owl reference for the day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these folks, um, Nicodemus was like, that was positively perplexing that there was a posse of possums. <laughs> Perfectly. Possum, purple, purple possums. Were they carrying parcels? No, they were just purple. <laughs> Which way am I going? <laughs> uh, right. It's around. Um, so yeah, uh, like to, anyone want to lead? I have an idea. Is it possible for me to, because all that time with running, I still have the weird potato gun that I made. <laughs> uh, just kind of like take it apart and put back together some kind of compass so that we can actually know which way we are going. Oh. Maybe I can connect it to our mech so that it has like a GPS. Ah. Whatever. <laughs> Some um, sort of geo positioning spatial system? Yeah, like a positioning possum, per a positioning purple possum finder. The mm -hmm. possum positioning. <laughs> our PPP, our poss possum positioning. Uh, the perplexing possum. Possum. <laughs> <laughs> As my head just, my brain just falls out of my head. Um, it's fine. We just have to find the prime possum perching. Uh, you, can you can attempt, yes. So what you're going to do is the added information of the shrine, uh, the repurposing of the the possum potato positioning system, um, and uh, 
I suppose Ethan Sky uh, piloting skills can all be combined. So we'll say that there's two two assets that can be added to what we'll say is Ethan's orienteering role. Oh no! Okay. Unless we assets. want it to be Maggie. Yeah. So you're gonna get two assets. It's I mean, not I... too difficult. Uh, plus, the difficulty is already lowered naturally because Nicodemus is pretty fairly sure he knows the way. Just follow the garbage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just follow the garbage. Um, I guess I guess be rolling then. Yeah, rolling, roll, roll it. Get... I'm I'm spending some effort. Okay. Just just get... the one. And I rolled a thirteen. Good enough. Yeah. So right. you you make your way. Um. Night is falling, and you come to uh, the front of the shrine. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone is home at the moment, uh, and you have to make a decision. Do you want to go into the shrine to stay for the night, or do you want to make camp outside? And this shrine is beautiful. It's uh, magnificent. It's uh, clearly um, uh, Kai has seen it before, doing the shadow vision. But you all see there's these beautiful angelic humanoid creatures that have been carved on it. Uh, there seems to be a faint glow. The moon is reflecting light, as well as the last light of the sun makes it appear like a, a brilliant orange color on one side and a crisp, cool blue on the other. Wow. Um, it looks like the grounds around it are magically preserved to not need tending. They seem to take care of themselves. Go up and knock on the shrine door. Oh. Yay, 100 bits. We'll announce ourselves and see if they'll let us in. Closed. No, uh, apparently it, it doesn't look like anyone's home at the moment, which is why no one's answering. You do see tracks going off into the woods, though. Hmm. Do they look like possum tracks? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Well, nobody's home, so we might as well... Make ourselves at home until they get here. I don't want to be outside right now. All right. Um, the door opens and <laughs> yeah, the pitter patter of possums. Uh, yeah, you're able to make it in without uh, much difficulty. And um, there are much larger statues in here of these winged humanoids. Uh, that looks as though there's like papers strewn about, like someone's been looking and searching through scrolls. Uh, there appears to be uh, large uh, dust covered tomes that are just laying on the floor as if, you know, a child had been using them as coloring pages. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, yeah, it looks like someone was deep in study and they were, they had found clues and the clues were leading them uh, to put together a mystery. Uh, what do you do? Currently, the uh, merry band of sword girlfriends, uh, they seem kind of leery of poking around here. They're like, the art's cool, but this place has a creepy vibe. Don't worry, ladies. If we hold hands, we'll stay brave together. <laughs> Brash goes, I don't want anyone touching me. I've had too much contact for the day. <laughs> and like, kind of like pouts. <laughs> she goes, uh, don't be afraid. Um... We're possums don't harm us, right, Kai? <laughs> All eyes turn to Kai. <laughs> Stares off vaguely into the distance. Yeah, they never hurt anyone. So we're safe here, right, Kai? Uh, I guess so. Um... Nicodemus says, I'm going to try to find the curator. And he kind of uh, does a little whistle. <laughs> And, like, a little cloud appears under his feet, and he, like, sort of cloud skateboards out of the room. Let's do this trip. That's it. <laughs> 180. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you want to do inside? Everyone's sort of sitting around, and it's like, uh, uh, I, um... percussion, percussion asked Maggie, why do you think they wanted Lee Afonso? all that's left oh that's right he's a single role family member correct yeah that's like a dot okay yeah um uh yeah she goes i reckon it's because well he's royalty the last of his lineage hmm. what's so special about his lineage says strings um 
He's royal? Do I know that? What makes other than him being like the last of the royal family? Um you um you're not too sure. Kai, can you make a perception check for me though? Yeah, I can. <laughs> and I've <I'm> chosen <joking laughs> this. <laughs> <clears throat> Sneaky possums are coming. I can feel them. Um, Maybe. Uh, that's going to be 10, but I'm trained, so it acts like a 13 or a step lower. Ah, okay. So that's good enough. So um, you, you see uh, in the books, someone's been looking through the royal genealogy. And someone's been throwing. They're on the page with Leofonzo right now. And in this shrine? Uh, yes, in the books that they've been looking through. Um, hey, uh, hey, Kitty. Yeah? You know how I said we could probably stay here? Yeah. I think we're trying to make a hammock. Yeah, what? The curator (laughs) comes through the front door. Rude to enter before I, I, I come come back. He kind of looks and he goes, "I hold you responsible for this." And points at ten. Girl, cool. what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> out! Every last one of them out. Wait, are they cute? Are they cu- cuddly? Roll a ten-sided die for me. Okay. That's how cuddly they will be. I want to know how cuddly they are. Finally, somebody else gets to deal with their four. four. Yes. So they got a little bit of fuzz, and they might be fun okay. to scritch behind the ear, but they have constant, like, gas problems. They stink a bit, and uh, they make the worst noises. So like a real possum. Yes. So basically, yeah, they're just a real possum, not a... Um, um, I say, I don't, don't get grumpy, Purple possum, um, we simply are here uh, seeking refuge. Oh, uh, then you can stay. Uh, this one's coming with me. And he like walks and puts his little possum paws on Leofonzo and he's like trying to rush oh. him down a hall. Oh, uh, oh. No, oh. hold on. That's my... I got to sort out. <laughs> uh, no. I mean, what happens here? Yeah, of course there isn't. Uh, why do you want my cousin though? Um, it, it, cousin. Yeah. Yeah. His name's Duncan. Here's yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> I look confused. I don't get it. You're you okay? Pardon <laughs> my intrusion. Gonna... Pardon okay. my intrusion. You want to take it, uh, Marcy? You. Yeah. You are cousins. <laughs> However, um, <laughs> that was going to be a secret that came up later. Okay, sounds good. The the purple possum says, I might not need him after all. I don't want this. Oh, God, I took this intrusion. Yes. (laughs) 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 Um, yeah, so do they seem to be going after Kai now? Uh, yeah, they seem to let go of Leofonzo, and they're kind of, uh, Looking at um, uh, Kai, uh, uh, I, I need someone uh, who is trained in seeing through deceptions to, to make a roll. <laughs> that's not not, an ability in that, so I'm like, oh, this guy is fine. He's I'm so dirty. derpy. This is good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm, I don't have any training in that. Your cousin Duncan, no use for him at all. Uh, Maggie, go ahead and make a roll, and you're going to get an asset because you have a million little girlfriends that are going to shout the same thing. Okay. The task difficulty is six. All right, and a task difficulty six, and it's going to step down one. And five. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. There we go, Zs. An eleven. No. Do you have an XP to reroll? I do. I actually have one more. Yep. And go ahead and take an XP from me for the intrusion I just got. Perfect. Thanks. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Perfect timing. Thank you. An 18, way better. All right, that's very good. And that's when you see, and the rest from behind, uh, there's there's kind of like 
a big magical possum puppet in the front, but then you start to see he's slowly losing his form and he's turning back into Nicodemus as Nicodemus snatches Kai and oh, no. uh, <gasps> puts a magical shield around them. Uh, the same as he put a magical shield around Leofonzo. He goes, well, I've got what I needed. Um, and with that, he's he's trying to like bubble his way down the hall. How do you all try oh. to stop him? Uh, um, I threw a sword at him. Yeah, girls, unite! <laughs> we start running. All right. With our so, arms behind us. So we're going to roll initiative now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nicodemus is a... He, he's an 18, so... I got a 16 for <clears throat> Maggie. I got a whole Kai can resist, but you're in kind of his bubble wheel that he's just going to tumble forward, like his human mm. hamster wheel that he just kind of runs forward. <laughs> Is it possible for me to use a skill to make sure that um, uh, Nicodemus goes last? It's a little too late for that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, if you had something that would make him go last, it would have needed to be used uh, prior before me calling this. Before, but yeah. you might be able to do something to him to mess him up. Okay, well, first I got to roll for my own initiative. <laughs> That'd probably be a good thing. Ah, roll You're five. Though, so you get an eight. Nice. So. I'm sorry. So, uh, Kai has a ten. Um, let me write these down real quick. So... Nicodemus, Maggie, Tin, Kai, uh, Kitty. And then you have uh, Friendos. So, uh, Nicodemus uh, uh, transforms into a giant hamster and kind of just starts hamster balling down through the shrine and is approaching a narrow hallway. Uh, that's all he does. He's trying to book it and get out of here. It is now Maggie's turn. He's created some distance between you by doing this. Okay, Maggie. Maggie's got some things. I gotta use some of these things. What have I got? Okay. Okay, that's a living person. I can't use that. Um. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Gang. Um. Okay. Um. I say. Um. Um. Uh, uh, Nicodemus, stop what you're doing right now, or I'm gonna have to attack. Does he look like he's gonna stop? Not at all. Great. Um, that's Good what luck. I was looking for. Is it look? Does he look like he's headed for like an exit? Is there a door or something at the end of the? Not an exit. He wants to go deeper. Into the oh, of into the into the. <laughs> For behold, I have snatched the key of it. Atla- I have snatched the key to Atlantis out from under your noses. Um, okay, I'm gonna. Um, I guess I think what I'd like to do is try to catch up to him. I actually want to physically like, like catch up to him. Um, uh, oh, I'm gonna tackle him. I, okay, I'm gonna use my love. You think of how best to use your circumstances to perform a feat of strength. The difficulty of any might-based task is decreased by one step. Okay. Um, Hmm, I don't want to do that. Uh, now remember, you're surrounded by a magical hamster ball. You'd have oh, to dive that's into right. it, which you might be able to do. I was about to say, would that be like a mite to, to break through his, his magic hamster ball? Okay, let's do that. Um, yeah, I go, girls, um, it's throwing time. Uh, and they like lift me up, and I like fist forward, and they like they toss ah! me like a, like a human bullet. Mite fist forward uh, straight for the bubble. <laughs> You're, yeah, there's no rolls. You're you're in the bubble now, so that would be your action. So you're in there with Great. Nicodemus, who it's suddenly getting crowded in there. Oh no! Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 it. Ten, you're up. So how is he holding Kai? He's not anymore. Kai's flopping around in this human <laughs> hamster ball that he's running forward. He has this like magical bubble around him, and he's just pedaling forward while Kai is stuck inside. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna crack the bubble. With my sword of ring. I just want to chuck it as hard as I can and try to crack it open. Sword of ring! All right. Test difficulty four to get it open. Okay. Um, okay. It is on lightning. <laughs> just because everything should be. Um, and I, I will spend a... You know, let's spend two effort. Just just because I can. Okay. So we're down to task two. Which I got a six, so that's success. 
nicely done. <laughs> and it deals five damage. To the bubble. You pop the bubble. And so... Uh, so Kai goes spilling out. Kai goes <laughs> spilling out. Uh, Maggie goes spilling out. Nicodemus goes spilling out. Ah, kind of falls and slides. Uh, but they're a ways down. Now, uh, it, it is now uh, Kiji's turn. Okay. Uh, so they're, they just rolled down there. They threw Maggie down there. <laughs> did we see the bubble pop? Yes. Oh, it did. Yes. Okay. So then, that, uh, I, uh, I, it says here that I have a robot assistant. I was wondering if I could uh, release that guy. Yes. To go and because they're going to be a lot faster than us, and go and try to grab Kai and Maggie. I think it's one of those things you double clack and it double clap and it just comes out of a nearby door and picks them up. It, it's actually much slower than everyone, but it just happens to be positioned correctly, just because I find that funny to me. Uh, or it can spring real fast. I don't know. Which one do you want? I just like, yes, master. <laughs> <laughs> it does that. It goes, yes. And it goes, <laughs> like, it's old. And then suddenly it's like something kicks in the high gear and it's like, Meow. his name is Bigglesworth. <laughs> All right, so it's over there, and it's got them. Um, now, uh, I skipped Kai. Kai, it's your turn. Uh, I just want to talk to Nicodemus for a second. Master, why? W what's going on? If he can talk as a giant hamster. He can. Um, <laughs> he's like, you are the key to Atlantis and unlocking power beyond measure. Power to defeat the Grey Legion. Power to rule this world. Okay, but baby, just ask next time. I did. <laughs> Thinking back of all the times that a Grey <clears throat> clearly asked Ty, there's like a montage. It's just like making breakfast. By the way, do you want to help me take over the world? <laughs> You're so funny, Master. <laughs> just like... <laughs> I can't risk it. The Grey Legion is too close. I have to use you to unlock the power of Atlantis. Ah, uh, you're so... The continent shall rise. Do you really not believe in the Grey Empress that much? She can't be trusted. We were at war with her not but 20 uh, years ago. All right, well... If you uh, fall into her hands, she will use you to march her army across all the Earth. <laughs> Oh man, why did I choose this intrusion? I imagine that Mar like being <laughs> just in the spaces like back and forth, like ah, oh, ah, every time that they reveal new information. All right, well they have more mechs in Atlantis. <laughs> I mean the entire t reason we were coming down here was to speak to the you were leading us here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust anyone with that laugh. Help! Oh, I love it. That, that'll be my turn. I just wanted to talk to him to get more information, and I did. It's fair. Uh, at this point, um, he sees that uh, <clears throat> you're about to be pulled from uh, the robot. Uh, what level is that robot assistant? It says uh, level two. Well, he has to defend, or it they have to defend against a, uh, a level 7 attack as Nicodemus is about to uh, drop uh, his ice javelin right through it. Okay. No, thank you. Uh, it, it says... Uh, no, that's if I roll. Sorry, there are other effects, but I don't use them. Sorry. At this point, it's hit and it's speared against the wall. Uh, just... So you're both being held and you're up against the wall now. Uh, you're actually, its hands are locked and it's holding Kai in one hand, Maggie in the other. Uh, Nicodemus starts uh, lurching forward and just, <laughs> when all the sword girlfriends just like start hammering him. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, they're all, oh, 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 my, my bones. And like, Maggie, am I, am I wrong, Maggie? Good guys don't laugh like that, right? <laughs> Do good guys laugh like that? 
Wait, who's turn? Got it. <clears throat> Got it. Um, uh, she sees her girlfriend's uh, attack and uh, she, she follows suit, I guess. Um, can I... I feel like there has to be a way. Because, like, I don't want to hurt him. I don't, don't want to hurt him. I know. You could maybe persuade him. I mean, it's, it's it was a little hard, but you might be able to talk some sense into him. He is He's simply mad and acting out of rage, or someone's controlling his mind, or he's a clone. Wow, that's a lot of options. All those things run through Maggie's mind in a brief instance as she contemplates how best to handle the situation. Um, and, and, and she says, um, uh, uh, she says, this is evil. You always have a choice. Make the right choice. Uh, it's going to be a persuasion check. Uh, task difficulty seven. So, well, the sword girlfriends are beating him up into submission. So that reduces it to a six. <laughs> so, Right. Um, I I don't even have any effort for this. I rolled a twelve. It's not good enough. But uh, how would you like an intrusion? I will so take an intrusion. All right. Give me so that he's, XP. He goes, all right. It doesn't have to be this way, but that means it's going to be another way. Um. Uh, okay. You have chosen a difficult path um and with that you notice his uh body begins to turn uh slowly to ice um and he's oh. like he goes for kai must prove himself as the master wizard now and his whole body turns to ice except for the wand and you will have to make decisions Without my wisdom of the ages. And he turns completely to ice. And he's a statue now, except for his wand, which is outreached. Should Kai want to take it? Tears well up in Maggie's eyes. Oh. And that's when your short girlfriends go, yeah, break him! And they no! Him no. There's Nicodemus everywhere. Um, I'm devastated. I know, and they percussion was like, "What did you expect me to do with a name like percussion?" Um, he only had three more days till retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Kill first. So now we're gonna montage for it. So we cut to outside the outside shot. There is an army of mechs walking and approaching the shrine. Once again, you must escape. But for now, we fade to black and we fade to our credit sequence as uh, Escaflown-esque uh, part one completes of this one shot that will go nowhere. It's episodic, so uh, that is how it is. So back to you, Dot. Now back to me. Uh, I, we hope you guys have enjoyed this short, little, adorable, um, little anime fun-filled Sunday day. Um, I am, it was uh, definitely unexpected, but definitely much needed. Uh, it lifted my spirits, that's for sure. So thank you, Grant, for uh, throwing all this together, for making an incredible intro in like no time at all and all of these assets and stuff like just well. Um, so uh, yeah, no, really, because um, I know it takes me forever to make those things. So uh, let's uh, take a moment. Uh, I guess we'll go around and let you guys tell us who you are, where we can find you online. And uh, I'll close out with some like little reminders and announcements and some really exciting stuff uh, that's coming to the dot lot here in the next few weeks so you know what grant you start us off you you share share your 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 magical love no you um hi everyone <laughs> my name is grant ellis i'm an independent content creator for tabletop role-playing games currently have a uh, kickstarter that i was a stretch goal on uh thanks to the dot lot and many others we smashed that goal i think we broke forty-two thousand five hundred today uh, wow. I'm a designer on that title, and uh, if you follow this company in uh, in October, they will have another Kickstarter launching. And if you're into dark fairy tales and story oriented mechanics, I may be designing uh, something down the line. Uh, but in the meanwhile, back uh, this campaign, and I think 15% of all proceeds past the original stretch goals actually goes to help my project down the road. Uh, Very nice. You can follow me on Twitter at Wise Papa Grant. And if you like weird uh, things like Escaflown esque, I'm always doing weird stuff online. Back to you, Chelsea. Nice. Uh, moving right along. I'm not even staring at the screen, but uh, that would make it. You know what? Um, our guest, our other guest today, uh, Bunny, tell us who you are and where we can find you online. 
it's me, I'm Bunny. You can find me on Twitter at HoneyBuns and on Twitch at BattlescarBunny. Uh, I am on the Greyhawk channel on Wednesdays playing Shadow of Vecna. I'm on Goldheart twice every other week playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist on Saturdays and then Pandimensionals on Sundays. Other than that, I'm on Twitch just hurting myself and going through Telltale games because storylines. <laughs> We finally hit season three, so that's going to start today. Very nice, very nice. Definitely check that out. And if you guys have links, you're welcome. Definitely welcome to drop them. Um, next up, I think it's Marcy in our, our running down the line. Hi, everybody. My name is Marcy Vellen. I uh, still have kind of a voice left, which is nice. Um, you, you can find me on Twitter at M-A-R-S-I-E-V-E-L-L-A-N. Um, and my pin tweet is actually like, my whole schedule. So if you're interested in finding me more places, just check there. What I really want to talk about is uh, the next session that we have for OWL, uh, which I, I GM and it will be OWL this time. Unfortunately, it will only be so much anime. Um, <laughs> it, it'll be enough <laughs> with uh, these folks. But next week, you might just meet the Owl of Lycia. <gasps> Maybe. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Wait a second. No. <laughs> There's other pieces of information I've been given. Oh my. Well, <clears throat> I'm excited now. Yep. That's all for me. I'm excited now. Uh, let's, uh, Ethan. You're up. Who are you? Where can we where can we find you online? Um, hello, I'm Ethan. You can find me at Super Robot Bear on Twitter, um, where I talk about all the sort of game designy things. The only show I'm on right now is this one, The Owl of Lycia, but I'm currently working on a cipher system supplement called Gobs of Gobs, in which you play wholesome gobs going on gob ventures. Oh, uh, hang out with gobs. Their friend. And uh, some other stuff, but if you want to hear any of that, go to my Twitter. That's where I put <laughs> Awesome. And I am Dot Gang. Uh, if you have hung out with us today, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys for the raids, for the loves, for the bits, uh, for, for the anime squeals. Um, and uh, coming up next, you'll, we'll be back here, uh, right here on the Dot Lot Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We launched the uh, full second season of Witch Girl Adventures uh, after... Last season, it got a little crazy, and um, we're keeping our fingers crossed um, about PAX. Uh, we may have some fun announcements for Witch Girl Adventures regarding PAX as well. Um, so things on that. Let's see. What else is there? Oh, um, definitely, uh, if you're not already part of the Patreon, um, I would highly suggest just it. Uh, we're doing some revamping of the Dot Lot Patreon. Uh, things like new emotes are coming um, for our uh, subscribers uh, for uh, Discord. We're going to have a whole slew of new ones for Discord. And uh, some special announcements will be coming regarding what's happening on the Dot Lot in 2020. I have a stack of things behind me. Oh God, I just knocked it off. I have a stack of things behind me, um, which may give you a little bit of a hint, but it's going to be a very full year uh, in 2020. So uh, lots of fun things uh, and a little pet project for uh, Halloween, which I'll also be announcing here very soon. So uh, lots of things coming your way, but until next time, uh, you guys, you know, be good, spread the love, be the best dot you can be. And uh, we'll see you guys here Tuesday night, 7 p.m. for Witch Girl Adventures. Bye gang. <laughs>